Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Kenneth Clayton. He's with the University of Kentucky Turf Grass Extension there. We've kind of been talking about Bermuda grass and some of the challenges that it poses in our lawns, in our landscapes, flower beds, those type of things. It can be a desirable grass in sports turfs and golf courses. There are um, Bermuda grasses that are bred for those situations. Um, but where we are in the transition zone in Kentucky, it can be difficult to decide is it um, worth putting in a Bermuda grass in my lawn? Um, because of our cold winters, um, we can potentially see winter kill of those. Um, but then we also just have common Bermuda grass that pops up in bare spots and also in, in landscape areas. Um, and you can see here, I have a Bermuda grass plant. Uh, this is just a common Bermuda grass. You may see it growing across the sidewalk. Because it is a warm season plant, it does well in the heat of the summer, um, but also it has stolons, which you can see here are lateral stems that creep across the ground and will actually uh, root into any bare soil that is available there. It also produces rhizomes, which are underground stems um, that will pop up in bare areas in your lawn. Um, so because it grows so aggressively, even with minimal amounts of water and great heat, uh, it can be a very problematic weed in our lawns in Kentucky. Even if it's in just patches or maybe in your flower bed, it's difficult to get rid of. If you have ever tried to remove Bermuda grass, um, just digging it is not, you know, raking it out, digging out that top surface is not going to work. Um, you can cut sod, you know, inch thick and still have Bermuda grass come back from those underground rhizomes. Um, so it's, it's a very uh, adaptive plant to mechanical damage. Um, so once you have it, you really need to think about uh, doing practices that will improve the cool season grasses, such as your tall fescue and your Kentucky bluegrass. Really the easiest first step in any control option is to raise that mowing height to somewhere around four inches. Um, and that's going to help to shade out the lower growing Bermuda grass in there. Um, it's less erect plant. It, it likes to lay down. So your tall fescue can help to shade that out. Um, as well as things like our fertility practices. We want to apply for fertilizers when the cool season tall fescue is growing its best. So in the fall um, or in the spring when it's growing and the Bermuda grass is dormant, but Bermuda grass will form patches in your lawn and then it'll go dormant in the winter, um, causing straw brown colored patches in your lawn, um, which are unattractive to the eye. So promoting your grasses to have a healthy stand and then using um, chemical options as well with that. Um, so it's really gonna be using both of those to get a full control. So predominantly our non-selective options would be things like glyphosate. You have to remember with that, it's going to kill all of your grasses. So you're gonna have a bare ground there. Um, so if you have a good herbicide like that, you wanna make sure you have a good reseeding or resodding um, plan in, in place there. Uh, we also have selective herbicides, meaning you're going to selectively remove Bermuda grass from the desirable cool season grasses. Um, so these are things like um, Hylax, Fusillade, Acclaim, are a couple common brand names that you would find on the shelves. And we have a publication that we've just recently put out which is Bermuda grass control for Kentucky lawns. And in there, it'll outline those chemical options um, and when and how much to spray. Yeah, and I know people who have tried to tackle this issue. They went out, they had the chemical control, and then they still saw sprigs come by. We definitely want to think about multiple years of control. Um, so you're not going to go out and spray glyphosate one time and reseed it and never see it again. Um, we wanna think more of a programmatic approach. Uh, you may have to do that several years in a row uh, to completely eliminate it from the lawn. Absolutely. And a lot of times if and maybe a neighbor has it or maybe even a farmer has put it in as, you know, a pasture grass, providing mm -hmm. a barrier sometimes can be helpful. Yeah, sure. Physical barriers uh, can work as well. Um, but just staying on top of it um, and think about going into the fall. If you can weaken that plant as we approach that first frost. Um, the chemical, the mechanical damage you can do to it is going to make it more prone to winter kill from our cold winters. So that's another option as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day.